The decisions we make today can affect us for decades, either in a positive or negative way. But the problem is we don't always know if our decisions are good or bad. Half the time we don't even find out until years later. And it's either a pleasant surprise or it's something that completely changes the way we see life in a bad way. And more times than not, it's a bad decision that seemed like a good idea. It might have even seemed responsible, but that decision traps you inside of a world that you didn't even know existed. And now all you want to do is escape that world. That decision was a financial mistake that you realize years later when you're in debt, barely able to pay your bills with no other options other than eat, sleep, work, get money, spend money, have nothing left over, repeat. But not only do I have a list of money mistakes that I've made that you need to avoid, I also have a story that completely changed the way that I see everything around me because I almost made a huge financial mistake early in life. And if I would have made that mistake, I don't know if you would be watching this video right now. By the end of this video, you'll walk away with everything you need to avoid money mistakes. And you'll also see how I turned mine around. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save more money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day. Let's get into this video. My biggest financial mistake was something that didn't seem financial at all. It was something that followed me throughout my life until I realized what was going on and I finally put an end to it. The mistake was allowing people to influence me. And this was much deeper than seeing my friends wear their nice clothes and their nice shoes, or when they invited me over their houses, me seeing their entertainment systems and fancy TVs wanting the same things. It was much deeper than giving into peer pressure to fit in with kids my age. I don't even know if it was possible to care less about fitting in back then because what I cared about was succeeding in life. The only problem with wanting success when you're that young is that you can easily be swayed in any direction if you're not clear on what you want. Check this out. I knew I wanted a good salary. I knew I wanted to go to college and I even knew what I wanted to go to college for and that was industrial engineering. The reason I'm telling you this is because even knowing that I was one of the few who had a decent idea of what I wanted to do after high school, I still almost fell for a trap that I'm not even sure I could have gotten myself out of. As embarrassing as this is, I think it'll help you out. I came this close to letting people talk me into doing something that I did not want to do. Grad school. This wasn't like a one-time thing. This happened three different times, years apart, which clearly means I didn't learn my lesson. The first time was right before graduation when my professor who decided to mentor me really pushed me to go to grad school. Keep in mind, I had just went on like a 30 minute rant with my friends telling them how I'm done with school after undergrad and I'm never going to grad school, only to walk into my professor's office and change my mind within seconds. The reason I didn't want to go to grad school in the first place was because I knew in my field I could make just as much money with a bachelor's degree as I would with a master's degree, which meant that I would make just as much money with less debt, so it was a no-brainer. Plus, I just like to have freedom and not be stuck in the house studying all night. Now I can actually do the things that I do anyway without feeling guilty, like watching Netflix. I even asked my professor, we'll call him Terminator because bro is about mean, I said, how much can I expect to make out of grad school, which is a valid question, right? And Terminator said, uh, about 65. Now at that point, I had already gotten my first job offer and that was literally what I got offered out of undergrad. So it only proved my point and I still found a way to get talked into applying for grad school. And I told myself that education is more important than experience when it comes to getting a job, which by the way, will never be the truth. I further justify my decision by telling myself that I could demand a higher salary with that degree alone. Also wrong. And I also told myself that my grace period for my student loans would be longer. Sure, but what about when that grace period ends? Let me tell y'all something. Grad school ain't cheap. We're talking five figures per semester times four semesters. I didn't think about that. Why? Because it seemed like a good idea. It even seemed responsible furthering my education, doing what most people my age never done before. I got accepted. I thought about it for about a week, man. Everybody was telling me to do it. My family, my friends, my neighbors, my dog, everybody was telling me to do it. So you know what I did? I turned it down. Thank God I did, because either way I look at it, it would have killed my personal finances. I would have at least added another 20 grand onto my student loans, and I would either be a full-time student with no other income other than working as an assistant, 
or I would have quit my full-time job or I would have dropped out of grad school because my first job ever made me work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Of course, I didn't know any of that when I decided not to go through with grad school. I just listened to my gut. I probably irritated everybody with my decision, but if I would have did what everyone else wanted me to do, I guarantee you I wouldn't be as well off as I am right now. I'd probably be looking sick. So the moral of the story is your decisions are for you. And if you're going to make decisions for your future, you've got to know what you're about. By the story I just shared with you, did I sound like I knew what I was about to you? No. I kept swaying back and forth like I was doing the lean with it, rock with it. Now you got to be so confident in the vision that you have for yourself that you can't be easily swayed by anybody, even people you look up to. Just take a quick look at them and ask yourself, did they have the results that I want to have when I'm their age? Because if the answer is no, it's as simple as, thank you, I appreciate your suggestion, I will consider it. Thank you so much. And then you get to step in. And it's not easy to do this because I backtrack not once, not twice, but three times. So that's how I know. But we'll talk about those in a second. I don't want to give you too many embarrassments at once. I don't want to overwhelm you. Another big financial mistake is not having financial goals for yourself. Not having an idea of what the perfect financial world looks like in your life is a big mistake because that turns into you living life without any preparation or building towards something. And the money in your account becomes just that. Money in your account that you spend sometimes, that you don't save or invest. Instead, you spend it on bills, debt, and sometimes a night out on the town. That works for some people, but we don't do that over here, bro. Speaking from straight up experience, you've got to have clarity. For example, after a little trial and error, I knew that I wanted to have a good cushion of money in more than one savings account, and I knew that I wanted to pay off debt. I knew exactly how much money I needed to have in each account and why. And most importantly, I had a vision for what I wanted my financial future to look like. I wanted to build another stream of income doing something other than what I did at work. And I knew that I wanted to eventually build a passive stream of income in addition to what I was making at work. Your goal doesn't have to look anything like mine. You just need to have one because then you'll work towards it. And if you want it bad enough, you will actually get there despite what anyone has to say about it. You'll fall a few times, but that's okay. I'm still falling right now. But what's important is that you get back up and you improve. Oh, I fell short today? All good. I'll get them tomorrow. Day after day. It took me almost two years to reach my passive income goal. But you know what? I didn't let anybody tell me that my goal was crazy or that it was unattainable because I know what I'm about. You know that show Parks and Rec when good old Ron Swanson was sitting down at the restaurant? He ordered himself the party platter. The waiter's like, uh, sir, you sure this feeds 12 people? Ron Swanson was like, I know what I'm about, son. That's what I mean. But a few years before that, I definitely fell back into wanting to go to grad school. Not because I wanted to, but because the people that I looked up to were telling me that that was what I wanted to do. And looking back, I'm just not sure if they were for the right reasons because all I remember hearing for the reasoning behind why I should go to grad school was for titles and for status over and over again. And if you know anything about me, you know I don't give a crap about either one of those. What I care about is making an impact and leaving my mark on this world, and that requires neither one of those. So I started applying again, and of course I never completed the process, but I listened to people who didn't have the results that I wanted, and I almost went through with grad school again. That would have taken more time away from me, and it would have put me further in the debt, which would have taken time and money away that I could have used to invest in myself to make myself more valuable without spending an arm and a leg on a piece of paper. What if I would have went through with that? There's so much I would have missed out on learning when it comes to personal finances. I would have gotten into even more debt, and this channel you're watching right now probably would have never existed because I would have been too busy studying and listening to other people's recommendations of what I should be doing with my life. That's not cold. And another thing I want to talk to you about is building something that most people never build in their lives at all because they feel like they're tired after work or maybe they feel like they have other obligations that will prevent them from doing this. And that's having a side hustle that brings in more income. I talk about this all the time, but here's why. Relying on one stream of income only is a financial mistake, period. That's basically saying I bet my entire life savings and my lifestyle that nothing will ever go wrong with this one stream of income that I literally survive on. This one stream of income that puts food and water on my table is bulletproof. But I bet you have backup keys for your house, your apartment, or your car. Your main source of income is the key to your current lifestyle. And all I'm saying is if you cherish what you have, you should secure it by backing it up with another stream of income. Check out my side hustle videos. It doesn't have to be difficult and it doesn't have to take a ton of your time. It just needs to build on top of the income that you're already making. 
A lot of us aren't doing this. And not having another stream of income, for one, is risky. But two, what do you see every time something goes bad with the economy? What do you see when people end up falling on hard times? They end up finding a side hustle anyways to put food on the table. So what if you could find something that you enjoy doing that doesn't even feel like work that you can earn some extra money every month doing? Honestly, what's stopping you? Because I almost stopped myself again. Messing with that grad school, when am I going to learn my lesson? This is the last time I promise. As I was building this YouTube channel, which has blessed me with some good passive income, I got talked into going for grad school again, and this time it was a close friend of mine. This time I really almost went through with it because I was double-minded between promotions at work and building the life that I've always wanted to live. I again assumed that another degree would mean promotions, which we're not even going to get into that. A promotion might get me $10,000 extra a year, but everything I'm working on behind the scenes might get me an extra $10,000 a month. But once again, I didn't think about that, at least at first, because this time I told myself, well, this time I won't be in debt because my job is going to pay for it. This was about a year ago, by the way. And that's true, my job would have totally paid for it. My money wouldn't have been in debt, but my time sure would have been. Because all the time I would have spent studying and working on projects and doing homework assignments would have starved this channel early on and I would have fell off on posting good content for you guys. My views would have depleted and the year and a half it took for me to grow an audience on this channel and get monetized might have taken double or triple the time or it might have never even gotten to that point at all. Before I move on to the next topic, I'll say this. I didn't always think it was necessary to have another stream of income. For the longest, I didn't even pursue having another stream of income. But sometimes the irony of the life that we live makes our thoughts come full circle with reality. And that reality hits different when every adult I know over 50 tells me, Reggie, I wish I had an income besides just my job. I need to find something else, man, because what I'm doing right now ain't cutting it. So if there's people in my life that feel like this at 50 plus years old, how do you think you might feel at 50? Don't be that person who didn't realize you were making this financial mistake only to wake up one day and you're 50 trying to figure out why you can't get ahead financially. That's real, bro. But the biggest struggle I think I see across the board is no budget, which means no plans for your finances at all. Here's where I met with budgets. There's no one size fits all budget because everyone's personal finances are different. But I think overall, a lot of us don't know where to start when it comes to budgeting or planning for our future, and it's partially because it's almost always met with resistance. At least at first. I mean, I definitely had resistance when I first made my budget because I worked hard for this money, this is my money, and I deserve to buy whatever I want. That's just how I felt. But you know, when you've spent your first few years of your adult life making financial mistakes, that should really humble you and redirect your perspective. It's not that you deserve to buy whatever you want, and you should actually be happy that you have the chance right now to correct your mistakes, because making sacrifices right now is a small price to pay for those mistakes. There's some people out here who will never recover from their financial mistakes. Always remember that. And what I had to learn was, multi-billion dollar corporations and businesses around the world have budgets. So who am I, who are you, or anyone else to think that you're too good to have a budget? To me, a budget is just something that puts limits on what you spend on certain things while you save and invest what you don't spend. It's that simple for me. The purpose of having a budget is to help you reach your financial goals by stopping you from loosely spending your money just because you can, while also giving your money a specific purpose every month. I made a video about it where I show you a very simple budgeting method that I use. I'll go ahead and link it up here for you. And that's what I use to manage my personal finances. I've gotten to the point where it's so simple that I can set it and forget it and not even think about it. I can spend all month and still hit under that budget every single month consistently. Of course, that took some time though. I designed this budgeting method specifically for me so I could save and invest my money while also paying for my necessities and my bills without sacrificing my quality of life or my enjoyment of life. Even if you're doing well right now and you're making good money, always know that you can improve your personal finances even more and a budget can help you do just that. The best way to avoid financial mistakes, especially the ones listed in this video, is by thinking about the future and always keeping that in mind. Not the present, not what other people think about you right now. Think about your future because every decision you make right now is either going to make your future better or worse. And in the end, you'll be the one who has to face the consequences of your decisions, not the people who tell you what you should do with your life. 
Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.